Uh, I am speaking today on prayer for breakthrough. Prayer for breakthrough. And I, will be, we, we, I want us to understand what is this breakthrough. What is breakthrough? What are you talking about when you talk about breakthrough? And we look at a few people in the Bible that prayed for breakthrough and how they do, did it. And then we'll spend some time in doing it practically. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, the Bible says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. May God bless the reading of his word. I consider this passage of the scripture to be a very, very important passage where it comes to the way God relates with his people and especially when it comes to his intervention in their lives. I want us to know that God has made us his own people by the virtue of us believing in his son, Jesus Christ, being washed by his blood, being included in his family. We are called my people. My people here at that particular time of writing this particular passage referred to the Israelites. Those of us now who believe in Jesus, we are the spiritual Israel of God. And God is saying here, rather he's speaking to his servant Solomon. After Solomon has done a great thing of building the temple and dedicating it and giving a lot of sacrifices and the power of God comes down. God knows that even in that very powerful moment of relating with his people, where his people have done everything well, he knows there will come a time when as human beings will turn away from God, will be attracted to the things of this world, will be attracted to wickedness, will fall away from the favor of God. And the Lord is saying that when that time comes, he gives a condition and he says, if my people shall do a number of these things, uh, I will hear from heaven, I will intervene, I will answer, I will be restored into their lives. I want you to know that no matter how far you walk away from God, when you decide, when you wake up to the fact that you need to seek his face, when you wake up to the fact that you have turned away from him, and you want to reconcile with him. You want to be a friend of him. The Lord has provided a way for you and for me to be restored. Not only to be restored, but also to receive goodies from his presence. Intervention from his presence. Blessings from his presence. Breakthrough from his presence. He says, if my people shall humble themselves, shall seek me shall seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. When the Bible speaks about humbling yourselves, I have not found anything more stressed in the Bible about how one can humble himself than committing yourself into a period, a time of fasting. There's nothing that makes a man look at himself the way God looks at him, then when you abstain yourself from pleasures, from food, from your normal things that make you enjoy, when you abstain from food, you fast. There is a way that you are able to look at yourself as God would want you to see yourself. In this period of prayer and fasting, you may have been able to know some things about your behavior that you have lived with for long and you have accommodated it. You are comfortable with. But in this period, you realize this is not right. You begin to repent and turn away from the same. Some things you know that your heart is in the wrong condition. It is so easy for man, for human beings to Go away from, from that humility, that relationship of a, a, a son and a father, 
uh, God and, his, and, and man, and you assume things, but when you give yourself into fasting, that there is a way humility just comes into yourself. Baka hata kutembea, unaanza kutembea kwa njia tofauti. Nikipindi hik, it is in this time of prayer and fasting that you even change the way you speak. You even begin to consider people you are not considering. You begin looking at your wife in a different way than the way you are seeing her. Your husband in a different way than you are seeing him. You can easily slide into arrogance, into pride, into sin when things are going the way kawaida kawaida. But when you take time to fast and pray, you humble yourself, you seek God, and the Lord God Almighty says, I will hear from heaven and I will answer you. There is a posture of your heart. There is a posture of your mind that when you go to prayer, you will not be able to break through to the presence of God. And this posture sometimes is brought by some of these things we are able to get on earth. The honor, the, the, the things that we acquire, the length we, 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 we have walked, uh, uh, the society, the way the society defines us as a man, as a woman, where you come from, our people behave in this manner. You could be carrying some characteristics of your people, of your background, uh, and they place you away from that right posture that when you seek God, you look at him, you break down, and you are able to connect with him and to see things the way God sees things. One eyes was fierce son. But when you fast, when you fast, when you abstain from food, something happens into your heart. And your heart begins to begin to pray more fervently, more meaningfully. Your mind gets you begins to concentrate more focused and to, and to God more than the things of the world. Say amen. Let me say a few things about breakthrough. Uh, some important statements that I want you to note. Number one, breakthrough happens uh, or rather let me uh, define what is breakthrough before I tell you these important statements. Breakthrough is defined by the dictionary as a sudden, dramatic, and important event. A sudden, dramatic, and important event. When we talk about breakthrough, it is not confined in the things of religion alone. Science has breakthrough. You hear that we have had a breakthrough on this or that uh, in science, in scientific uh, issues. Medicine has breakthrough. Uh, it is not long time ago when uh, COVID 19 hit the world. And the world took some time before it could develop a vaccine to counter it. But when it was developed, it was a breakthrough. It was a relief. People were happy. It was an important happening. Technology has breakthrough. Eh? When the first mobile phone was made, it was a breakthrough. When the first vehicle was made, it was a breakthrough. Even today, new technologies are being developed Breakthroughs are coming. But when it comes to the things of God, we are talking now of uh, bringing this to yourself. Breakthrough that touches you. Yeah? Breakthrough that will bring an, an important turnaround in your life, in your ministry, in your work, in your family, in your marriage. And sometimes, many of us, need that breakthrough in our lives. Many people who are seated here will do with some touch of a divine hand, divine touch in your life, in your marriage, in your career, in your business, wherever you are. Many of us who say, God, if only within these 40 days of prayer and fasting, you would come and open the floodgates and touch that which has become an impediment. Remove all obstacles and make a way 
where there is no way. How many of us are saying I can do with some breakthrough in my lives? Lift up your hand. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made. that We may be rejoice and be glad in it. Important statements. Number one, breakthrough happens only when you seek them. You must do something to seek a breakthrough. You cannot assume, you cannot just sit without doing anything and expect a breakthrough to come through to you. You need to do something. Like what we are doing. Like praying and fasting. Maybe when they have been talking about prayer and fasting here, you have told yourself, ah, this is not for me. This is for serious people. This is for other people who are very much in need. But there's a saying that is said by a certain uh, community that one will be woken by his own things. Let me just say it the way it is said. Modo okeragione make. Yani mutu anamushako na mambo ya? Yake. Mutu anamushako na mambo ya nani? Your mother can tell you in the morning, wake up when you are a baby, when you are a small child. Wake up and go to school. Ana kuchapa. Ana kufanya nini? Ana kufanya nini? But ana kuambia siku moja, mutu anamushangwa na mambo yake. There is a day that will come. Your parent will not be near you. But because of the responsibilities, the issues upon your life, you will have to wake up and do something. The same way you may have assumed and said, I'll let the pastors pray for me. I'll let the elders pray for me. I'll let the leaders pray for me. But there comes a time where you say, I need a breakthrough. And this breakthrough, it is not somebody else to pray it for you, to seek God for you. It must be you and you. Sometimes God will call our attention by bringing to us some difficult situations that can only be removed by God himself. And at that particular time, you know that you need to seek God in prayer and fasting. So breakthrough happens only when you seek it. Number two, if anything is worth worrying, it is worth praying about. If anything is worth worrying, it is worth praying about. Do you worry sometimes? Although the Bible says that we should not worry, we should uh, pray about everything and uh, commit all things to God, and God will take away the anxiety. But many of us, many times, we find ourselves in situations where we, are, we get worried. You get worried about your, your children. Get worried about your job. Get worried about your business. Worried about your health. Worried about your future. Worried about this or that. If it is worth worrying, it is worth praying about. That thing that is causing you sleepless night. You can take away the sleepless nights and invite some good night's sleep. By committing it to God through serious prayer. That is a matter that you require a breakthrough. You require God to touch you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. Prayer is the most important key of the kingdom of God. Prayer is the most important key of the kingdom of God. And fasting is the most important tool of prayer. But prayer is the most important key of the kingdom. There are many things in the kingdom of God. There is healing. There is joy. There is peace. There is prosperity. There is every kind of good thing in the kingdom. But the key to it, the key of that kingdom is prayer. And the most powerful tool of prayer is fasting. Did you know, brethren, that uh, there are many things you can pray for without fasting and not get a breakthrough? Sometimes you pray for something and not get a breakthrough. When you find yourself in praying and you are not getting a breakthrough, it is time to declare a time of fasting. I am saying this for those of us who are, who are still fasting and for those of us who haven't yet started or who started and stopped somewhere, perhaps you may need to add a day or two 
You may need to pick a week or something because we still have some days. And seek God seriously about that issue that you are worrying about. Amen? That issue, if you seek God, God is going to give you a wonderful breakthrough. Finally, number four, it is good to understand and to know that Jesus expects his followers to pray and to fast. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 6, Jesus says, when you pray, not if you pray. And in verse 16 to 17 of the same chapter of Matthew 6, Jesus says again, when you fast. He is not saying if you pray, if you fast. The Lord is telling us that he expects us to walk in victory. He expects us to walk in divine health. He expects us to walk in high heights. But he expects us to do so by prayer and by fasting. And therefore, our lives must be intertwined. Iwe ni maisha ya maombi na kufunga. Ambia mwenzako maombi ya kufunga. Maombi ya kufunga. Bwana asifuwe sana. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor, ask him, or have you started this prayer and fasting period? Have you, how many days have you taken? Don't take an answer, just a, just a question. I don't expect an answer. Praise the name of Jesus. Did you know something, brethren? I have known this ministry since its inception. The Pephas Yokimao Community Church. In fact, I was among the people who came to do research here. Uh, I was uh, co-opted by the bishop. He was still my friend. And we walked around here. And one of the things I can associate the many breakthroughs that this church has received over the years is the, uh, the habit that you people have developed of prayer and fasting. If I was to go any other place and be asked, what is the secret, one single most secret that you can uh, pinpoint with the Pephas Yokimao Community Church, I would say it's your habit to pray and to fast. Every time you take time to pray and fast, God will give you a breakthrough. There are demons, there are mountains, there are valleys that will not go until you decide to pray and to fast. Say my amen. Let me just uh, pick a few men of God in the Bible who did what we are talking about and we see what they did. Then we'll get, we'll get ourselves into prayer in the name of Jesus. The first man I see is uh, King David. In the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse number 8, the Bible says, And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David, and David heard of it and went out against them. Verse 9, the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. First Chronicle, uh, verse 10, and David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines, and will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto him, Go up, for I will deliver them into your hand. There was a great army coming against David. What I want to pick here is this, brethren. It was just after King David had been anointed to be king over Israel. Before that time, the enemy had, no, had not given David any attention. But now that David had been anointed to be the king, it is time now that the enemy decides, I'm going against David. How many of you know that with every blessing that God brings your way, there is always an attack of the enemy to receive that blessing. For every mountain, there is a valley. The enemy has got no business with you if you are not making any uh, uh, impact in the world or in the kingdom. If you are the person that is dependent upon in the society, in the family, in the community, in the church, once you take that position, the enemy will want to resist you. The enemy will want to make you 
ineffective. The enemy will attack you. It is upon you to seek the help of God. You must understand. You need to realize that that position that you are in, abilities, favors, opportunities, privileges that God uses to lift other people, it is God that has given it to you. And for you to be able to sustain it, to maintain it, you need you and God to work together. The Bible says, after David was anointed, the enemy came against him. But even when the enemy came against him, the Bible says, David sought God. It is important not just to depend on your mind, on your intellect, on, 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 on your instincts. Seek God and ask God. God, on this issue, how am I going to deal it? To deal with it. There, there are many people here that God will use and is using for many things. There are many things that God will use to achieve. Uh, will use the Okimao Community Church to achieve not only in this country, but also beyond. But for us to be able to achieve it, we must understand that the enemy will want to stop us. The enemy will want to attack us. And if we are going to overcome, if we are going to build the sanctuary we want to build, to build a 10,000 uh, member church, to be able to influence the whole world, then we need to know that we need to be seeking God. We need to stay closer to God because it is only by the power of God we will be able to overcome. Say my amen. In that family of yours, your children, the dear ones you have, your parents, your brothers, you cannot take them for granted. You cannot be a person who does not care. You need to know that the Lord called you that you may become a light of the others. You do not have power of your own to do that. You need God to enable you to overcome. Can you say amen? amen. Sometimes, the second person we see is Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat at, at some point was gripped by fear. In 2 Chronicles 20 verse 1 to verse 4, uh, you may read it in your own time, but a great army was coming against Jehoshaphat. I said 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1 to 4. A great army was coming against Jehoshaphat. And fear and alarm gripped Jehoshaphat. What did he do? He declared time of prayer and fasting. Bible says as he sought God. And this time they prayed all of, all of the people. The young and the old. Animals, everything fasted. And the Bible says after that period... When they went to war, God caused the enemy armies to fight against themselves. God told him, you will not have to fight this battle. I will fight the battle for you. Brethren, we need to stop fighting our own battles. And we need to bring God into our wars, into our fears. This man had been gripped by fear and alarm. What is it that my brother, my sister may grip you with fear? What is that news that came to you that gripped you with fear and alarm? It is possible to bring in God to sort out the problem. To sort out the mess. He can bring a way out in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. The other guy I'm seeing is Ezra. Ezra in chapter, in Ezra chapter 8 verse 22 to 23. He says God already had given him a, a favor with the king. He had been allowed to go and rebuild uh, the, the walls of Jerusalem and uh, uh, the temple of Jerusalem. And he, he is ashamed to, to, to require of the king for, for soldiers, for horsemen, uh, because he is wondering if I ask of this and I've talked of a powerful God, what I know. The best thing would be to seek God. The Bible says, when he did not know what to do, Ezra sought God in prayer and fasting. He says, so we fasted and besought our God for this and he was entreated of us. Ezra fasted when he had challenges. He did not just fast alone. It was a corporate prayer and fasting. Whenever you hear corporate prayer and fasting is called, please 
Do not assume it. There is power in corporate prayer and fasting. Kuna nguvu katika maombi ya pamoja, ya kufunga ya pamoja. Hawa waliomba wote, the whole congregation, in the olden times, when things were bad in the nation, the leaders would declare a solemn assembly. They would call people to pray and fast, young and old. And therefore, when we have called one like this one in the church, I believe because I know many of you have been praying and fasting, the kind of power that God has released here, if we were to be given time to pray, maybe we will not be able to end it because I believe the corporate power, the corporate anointing here can move mountains in the name of Jesus, can bring healing to people who are sick, can bring breakthrough to those people who have sought breakthrough for many years. Na imekata, leo hii inawezekana katika jina la Yesu. Inawezekana kwa jina la Yesu Christo. Hallelujah! You know you may seek for something for many years. Ufika mahali mbaka wone uzoe. Leo ni siku ya kuachana na kuzoea. It is a time to say no to kuzoea vitu ambavyo siza mungu. And receive that which comes from God. We will push it together in Jesus name. Say my amen. I see also Daniel. Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. He says he understood from the books. Their time to stay there in Babylon was over. But they were still there. You, you, your time for living that level may have passed, but you have not understood. For you to move to the next level, you may need some powerful breakthrough, some help from God. Say my amen. Then Daniel was, was still in Babylon and the Israelites, and their time was already done. And he declared times of prayer and fasting. And he sought God. And although he was alone, he moved heaven. He moved heaven. He caused heaven to remember the promises that God had brought, uh, had given to the Israelites. What are we expecting through, uh, after our period of prayer and fasting? Yeah? We are expecting the Lord God Almighty will answer our prayer. He will answer our prayer. Number one, he will make us as a people in the name of Jesus Christ, he will make us as a people to have the right focus. There are things that we have not done because we do not have the right focus. Our mind is not clear. It is in times of prayer and fasting that God brings clarity to our minds. He causes us to see things that were not there. I all, I'm always amazed by the story of Hagar, uh, this woman who, that was running away from Sarah. When she was in the wilderness, and the Bible says uh, that she ran out of water, and she went some distance away and kept her child there so that she, did, she does not hear the child cry and die. And when she was far away, an angel comes, and after some conversation, the Bible says the angel opened her eyes, and she was able to see a well that was near where she was standing. Bible does not say that God opened a well. No. The eyes were opened. There are many of us whose answers are very near where we are. Answers are in very obvious places. But our eyes are not open. Our mind's focus is clogged. We, when we are praying and fasting, that clog, that, that, that film, that blindness is taken away from our minds. And clarity comes into our minds in the name of Jesus. Some new inventions need to come amongst us in the name of the Lord. If you are in the corporate uh, world, uh, so some new ideas should come to you during this time of prayer and fasting. If you are in business, some new concepts should come into your mind during this time because God is clearing your mind and causing you to focus on the right thing and to see things like God sees them. Can somebody say amen? We are seeking also in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and even have, uh, uh, for the peace of God. Some of us don't sleep because of some problems, maybe sicknesses in the body, problems you, you think too much, you are stressed too much. We are declaring the peace of God today in the name of Jesus. That thing that you can do nothing about, give it to God. 
When you are worried, when you are worrying so much, you do not help anything. You will not change even the color of your hair. But when you give it to God, God is able to take care of you in the name of Jesus. Finally, we want to become confident and fearless. Confident of our faith. Confident of who we are. Fearless of the anything in the name of Jesus. Do you know, brethren, if we were to know what we have received from the Lord and what God has made us, if we were to know, we would not keep it to ourselves. We would share with everybody we know. Hallelujah. Because we know that in this Jesus, in this God, there is peace, there is clarity, there is confidence, there is hope. We will share it with our beloved ones. We will share with the people we love. We will speak about Jesus. Can you turn to somebody near you, Mulize? When did you last tell somebody that Jesus is a prince of peace? Hallelujah. What was the answer? If indeed you get peace from Jesus, peace is priceless. You cannot buy peace, isn't it? If you get peace from Jesus, you can also tell somebody who is disturbed that Jesus gives this peace. He is a prince of peace. Amen. Job 11, 13, 19 speaks about the confidence that comes from uh, seeking God in prayer and fasting. You are no longer fearful. You're no longer seeking approval from people so, uh, uh, from your people of your own age or class. You want approval of God in Jesus' name. Amen?